completely rip. Hello, I'm Steve Murphy, and this could be any one of hundreds of neighborhoods in the Halifax area, Truro, northern Nova Scotia, Charlottetown, or eastern PEI. This is some of the damage that was done by the hurricane, Hurricane Juan. This neighborhood is the Hydrostone area of Halifax. This is a neighborhood that was built from the ashes of another disaster, the Halifax explosion of 1917. And many of these great old trees had stood here for 80 years or more. It took another natural disaster to tear them up. Hurricane Juan rampaged through the Halifax area in the early morning of September 29, 2003. With the sustained winds at 150 kilometers per hour and gusts even higher, there was loss of life and extensive destruction and damage to property and of course thousands of trees. Some of the hundreds of thousands who lost power in the hurricane have asked us to share the story as it was told in the hours during and immediately after Hurricane Juan. What we have for you tonight is a chronological synopsis of the arrival and the impact of Hurricane Juan as it was reported by ATV News. But I've got a tropical disturbance to talk about which could have an effect on our weather by early next week, by uh -oh. Monday, as soon as Monday. And the weekend itself, I've got some windy, showery weather in that forecast too. But Is that all. the number 15 you mentioned before yes. we went to break? The tropical number 15. Disturbance. Does it Let's, have a name? Not yet. Oh, well, if it, if it becomes a storm, it'll be Juan, tropical storm Juan. Okay. It is relatively quiet on the Halifax waterfront at the moment, the proverbial calm before the storm. Although, as you can see, the wave action in the harbor is now picking up, and most of the boats have been moved to more sheltered areas in Bedford Basin. The Navy fleet has been secured as Hurricane Juan blows in from the south. Now live further to the west, it is beginning to rain in Mahone Bay, nothing like what is going to be happening within about three or four hours from now. The Mahone Bay area in the western end of the likely landfall zone. And now to the scene at the National Hurricane Center in Dartmouth. The forecasters there have been watching the storm now for several days. We will be going live to the Hurricane Center in just a few minutes. Hurricane Juan has now increased more in its forward speed. Take a look at the satellite right now and I'll tell you that the latest news from the Hurricane Center is that it is moving towards Halifax at a rate of 46 kilometers per hour and that is expected to increase as well. I think you can see uh, the wind has really picked up down here on the waterfront and if it looks quiet on the water at least it certainly is. You were mentioning earlier about uh, a number of vessels that have been moved. I spoke with DND at the Navy dockyard and they've moved the fleet repositioned it to get uh, ships like HMCS Preserver out of the way of uh, most of the wind. Let us go live to Peter Boyer who's program manager at the Hurricane Center. Peter thanks very much for making a few minutes for us. We very much appreciate it. My pleasure. Uh, let's begin with your latest uh, expectations of the where and the when of the landfall. Looking for landfall uh, just a little bit later than we've been thinking all day, perhaps closer to midnight. Uh, we were concerned about it making uh, landfall anywhere from Mahone Bay to just east of Halifax. We're not as concerned about the Mahone Bay area now, more over to St. Margaret's Bay and perhaps as, as far over as, uh, as Lawrencetown. We're going out sailing just before the hurricane. This is going to be great. This is going to be so much fun. So windy right now. Well, we ran into people from North Carolina as we were coming into town who have just ex lived through Hurricane Isabel last week and they commented, they said, we can't believe nobody's doing anything in this town to get ready for this. I know, and you probably won't. I mean, you'll probably see people leaving stuff out because we've never had anything. And really, you know, I think I'd have to see it to believe it. Good evening everyone, I'm Steve Murphy in the ATV News Center and for the first time in 40 years the full force of a hurricane 
is bearing down on Halifax tonight. Forty years ago, it was Hurricane Ginny. Tonight, it is Hurricane Juan. It's just off the coast now. Landfall expected in the HRM in about a half hour. But in the meantime, there are evacuations being ordered. And in fact, all residents of the low-lying coastal areas in the HRM, those living in areas that would be less than six feet above sea level between Sambro and Clam Harbor, are being ordered to leave their homes. And this includes residents of urban and suburban uh, waterfront and harborfront properties in Halifax and Dartmouth. We now have confirmed with the Canadian Hurricane Center that the, the center is approximately 50 kilometers south of Halifax and is expected to make landfall around the Sambro area. Now in its motion, that means that it's going to be crossing the uh, mouth of Halifax Harbor as well, uh, I would say between 11.30 and midnight, Steve. Thanks very much, uh, Peter Code, following the, the track of Hurricane Juan as it approaches the coast of Nova Scotia. It's just off the coast now, and as we indicated, and this is of paramount concern to those people who are affected, obviously, by the evacuation, but if you are living in a low-lying area anywhere between Sambro and Clam Harbor, you are ordered to leave your home and head for a safe shelter, either in another location of your own choosing or, failing that, in one of the fire halls in the urban areas. You may also visit one of the four relief centers that have been set up. ATV's Joanne Clancy is live in downtown Halifax. What is the situation where you are, Joe? Hi, Steve. Uh, I am live, as you suggest, out on the waterfront uh, and the wind and rain pelting down. I don't know if you can see behind me here, but there's almost two dozen people down on the waterfront with us here tonight. And uh, one of them is actually a man who studies hurricanes. His name is Chris uh, Miller. Chris, what brings you down to the waterfront? Well, I, this is what I do my research on, so I thought I'd come down and have a look. This is, uh, you know, a once-in-a-decade kind of opportunity, maybe longer. You don't think it seems a little crazy with the wind and the rain and uh, all the evacuation orders to be out tonight? It is a little bit crazy, but uh, with uh, Hurricane Landon just sort of west of here, uh, it's going to put the waters up really high in Halifax Harbor. So I study storm surges, and this is kind of what I wanted to see, so I decided to come on down. Is there much evidence that people have been heeding the order to evacuate by 1130? Well, I did talk to emergency measures and they said that they, the police were going door to door to the condos, places like Bishop's Landing up and down the waterfront and asking people to leave voluntarily. Now, I haven't seen, I have not seen any evidence of that just yet, no. but I know Actually, that you if are I could just jump in, Joe, we are getting now some video evidence uh, collected by uh, one of our uh, electronic news gatherers, a cameraman people leaving the Bishop's Landing complex. This is a very, very high rent district on the waterfront in Halifax. And in fact, people are leaving. There's uh, one person uh, with a suitcase uh, and of course the proverbial uh, Sobeys bag. So obviously they're planning to be out of their home for at least the night. Uh, Peter Ballant now joining us live from the uh, Eastern Passage area on the other side. What's the situation there, Peter? Well, Steve, it's wet, it's windy, and as somebody pointed out to Joanne, who she was interviewing on the waterfront there, it's a simple way to describe it, but it's scary, it's true. I'm not holding on to this rope for dramatic effect, Murph. I'm holding on to it because the wind gusts are massive down here. It is wet and windy, and in the 27 years I've been covering news, I have never been out in anything like this before. Weather like this holds a strange fascination for people, as we just witnessed with Joanne down in Halifax. There aren't many people in our location here in Eastern Passage, but there is a fair amount of traffic traveling back and forth, people who are out in this storm. You know, Eastern Passage is a community that makes its living very much from the ocean, and there's a lot of merchandise tied up behind me in the waters here, and there's a great deal of fear, perhaps, of what's going to be, you know, what people are going to wake up to in the morning. I uh, also was spent some time just before we went on the air tonight at one of the evacuation centers here out in Eastern Passage in Cow Bay talking to the, to the chief there and as we were there they were rolling in the cots and I said geez you folks are in for a long night. He says these are for my volunteer firefighters and for yeah. the police officers who are in for a long night. At this point that plan is still being formulated for people here in Eastern Passage. But of course, you're familiar with this area, as many of the viewers are. The big fear is that this water is going to surge and, and flood the, you know, the communities and the businesses that are very near to the water. At the same time, it's worth pointing out that in order to get to Eastern Passage, you have to cross the bridges that span Halifax Harbor, and the Bridge Commission is paying very close... Hold on, Steve. You okay, George? The Bridge Commission is paying, playing, paying very close attention to this wind because if the wind hits 90 miles per hour and it's from the north and the south, then they're going to be closing the McKay Bridge, which is the new bridge to high-sided traffic. And uh, they're, of course, 
you know, like everybody else, very concerned with the wind speed, among other things, Steve. Now, Peter, I'm getting a little bit concerned about you and George there. That would be George I Reeves who's operating him. the camera. Uh, Peter, behind you, uh, there appears to be a huge, tremendous amount of water right behind you. I've lost Are you on a wharf? I think we've lost Peter. Uh, but as you can tell, uh, the situation there in Eastern Passage is uh, uh, quite dramatic as Hurricane Juan continues to approach uh, the Halifax area. So right now it looks like about another 15 or 20 minutes we'd actually see the eye of the hurricane crossing Sambro, sort of a glancing blow, you might say, to the peninsula because it'll cross from Sambro across to the, uh, to the Lawrencetown area of uh, the coast. And again, it will track directly across uh, downtown Halifax, downtown Dartmouth on the way up the eastern shore. All right. All right, Peter Code, thanks very much. And uh, once again, we want to reiterate that um, there is a state of emergency, a local state of emergency in the Halifax area tonight for evacuations in all of the low-lying coastal areas all the way up the coast from Sambro through Clam Harbor. This is a live shot uh, from our camera on top metropolitan place in Dartmouth. That is the Angus L. McDonald Bridge. And as you can see, there does not appear to be a great deal of bridge traffic. It may well be, in fact, that um, bridge traffic has now been uh, somewhat restricted. You see a, uh, police lights on the Halifax side of the bridge. So there may, in fact, be um, some restriction, if not a closure, of some of the traffic on the bridge. We did know that the, the walking lane would be closed. Of course, who would want to be walking on the bridge in the middle of this? Listen, we've got a hurricane out here, and I'm only standing about 50 feet from where you are. But uh, right now, it is absolutely blowing hard out here. We've seen some transformers blown. The power's gone out a couple of times just across the street here. And uh, we've heard a lot of uh, what sounds like a debris or branches falling in and around this uh, neighborhood. And it's actually kind of scary out here right now. Yeah, and there is a bit of traffic. That, that, of course, is Roby Street, which is a main arterial in Halifax. There appears to be just a bit of traffic there. But what, uh, what are the road conditions that you're able to see from there, John, in terms of water on the road? Uh, it doesn't look, to, there goes the power again. I don't know if you can see behind me. Yeah. Uh, the roads don't look uh, all that bad, although there's a huge pockets of water off to the side. Uh, you know, I've been in a lot of windstorms out on the west coast as well. This is the worst that I've ever been in. It's, uh, it's really getting kind of hairy out here, and it's uh, remarkable to see the difference in just the last 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah, ever since, uh, well, really, about 7 o'clock tonight, it's been quite incremental, but uh, then suddenly, as you've said, in the past half hour or so, it's become quite a bit more intense as the storm approaches the coast. John, thanks very much. You're CTV's John Van Valley Rao outside in Halifax uh, as Hurricane Juan continues to uh, bear down. During our last uh, live report with CTV's John Van Valley Rao, you saw the uh, lights go out, and this may be the reason, not far from where John was reporting, uh, a transformer is now burning. This is one of a number of power problems being reported in the uh, Halifax Regional Municipality tonight. There were earlier power problems, in fact, in the, uh, the emergency center in Dartmouth from where all of the emergency measures are being coordinated in this storm. And we're also hearing of reports, uh, sporadic power failures uh, in the eastern part of the HRM. Breakfast television is preempted this morning by the special coverage of the aftermath of Hurricane Juan. We're now emerging from a long and dark and dangerous night on mainland Nova Scotia and now Prince Edward Island where Hurricane Juan is now a tropical storm that's still pounding the island. Much weaker now than it was when it smashed into the Halifax metro area just after 11 o'clock last night. The damage uh, is quite extensive and at least two people have been killed. Power remains out this morning for hundreds of thousands of people and a local state of emergency in Halifax remains in effect this morning. All of the schools are closed in the Halifax Regional Municipality, in Nova Scotia's Colchester County, Cumberland County, East Hants, and Pictou County. And the problem overnight uh, has been threefold. First of all, of course, the wind and the pounding waves and the rain. Water began to surge over docks on the waterfront in Halifax before the brunt of the hurricane last night. And then with the very strong winds, the trees began to fall down. The power went out and the telephone service has also been interrupted in much of mainland Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. The hurricane roared through Halifax, claiming the life of at least one person in the city. A paramedic was killed when a tree fell on the ambulance he was driving. This happened just outside the QE2 Health Sciences Center. Another paramedic was injured in this, although not seriously. There has also been a death reported in Enfield, Nova Scotia, also 
when a tree fell. Now, for the first time in history, both of the bridges that span Halifax Harbor were closed, and the older of the two, the Angus L. McDonald Bridge, remains closed at the moment. Uh, there is talk about one lane of traffic moving over the new bridge, the A. Murray McKay Bridge. We want to go now live to Margaret Murphy of the Nova Scotia Power Corporation, who's joining us now. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning. Uh, let's get a, a picture, if you will, of how many people in the province of Nova Scotia are without electrical service this morning. Well, our crews are out there now assessing that at this moment. Certainly uh, well over 100,000 at the height of the storm, easily 140,000. Uh, very unusual to have a hurricane move on land. This had a significant and concentrated impact on the metro area, on Truro, and then in a clear path right across the province. As you can see behind me, that is the walkway to the ferry terminal, and it is shredded. The roof has been completely ripped, windows have blown out, and the damage doesn't stop there. There are trees, as is the case all around the metro area and around the HRM, that have fallen and are literally blocking the area here. To my right, the boardwalk is a complete shambles. Uh, Salties a restaurant down here, the back wall has been completely blown out and we understand that the phone booth that was inside that restaurant flew with the force of the hurricane to the casino. And let's get a closer look at some of the damage behind you. That is the ferry terminal. Uh, there appears to be a lot of rubble, uh, a lot of debris. That's right. I'm going to step away for a moment and, and Kevin uh, Doyle is going to, I don't know, can you, I hope you have a clear uh, sight of that now, but you can see that the roof is just been ripped apart. The windows uh, on the left-hand side heading down towards Dartmouth are completely blown out. And as for the Dartmouth side of the ferry, we understand there has been extensive flooding. Not uh, severe building damage, but uh, a lot of flooding inside. And of course, obviously, the ferries aren't running today, and who knows uh, when they'll return uh, to service. But uh, the harbor here is scattered with debris and, and quite a sight indeed. I know uh, Observers here are certainly shocked by what they see this morning. All right, there is quite a picture emerging here at First Light this morning. Anne, thank you very much. You're welcome. ATV's Andrew on the waterfront in Halifax. Uh, Anne mentioned that the ferries are not running in the HRM this morning. There is also no metro transit service anywhere in the HRM. And again, I'd like to repeat uh, that if you're watching us here on, on ATV and ASM this morning, chances are you're not in the affected area. Uh, we know that there are approximately 100,000 addresses uh, in Nova Scotia without electrical service this morning and many of those are in the Halifax area so certainly if you know someone in the Halifax area it might be helpful to place a quick telephone call to them to pass on some of this information also uh, we know that Prince Edward Island has been very hard hit by uh, Hurricane Juan which is now downgraded to a tropical storm uh, the island still being lashed by winds and rain and uh, many many thousands on the island are also without power as are a significant number of people in Colchester County in the area from Truro to Tatamagush. 200 people from this apartment in Dartmouth were forced out of the building after four of the units collapsed and at least three people were trapped for a time. Uh, when it was over, however, no one was hurt. Probably, uh, there was a partial uh, brick wall collapse in one of the apartments that came down across the doorway. It uh, trapped the people inside. The police arrived on scene first and they were able to gain entry through the wall and uh, get the people out. As far as I know, the people were uninjured. Come on out. Officials are going to try to find out what caused the crash, the collapse sometime later today. Uh -oh. One of many jobs to be done by way of cleanup. Uh, the major problem in the Halifax area this morning, beyond the lack of electrical service, is tree fall. Uh, Halifax is a city of very old and mature trees, and many of the main uh, thoroughfares in Halifax, of course, are lined with trees, many of which uh, have been ripped from the ground, and others of which have just lost huge, uh, tremendous tree limbs. And we're going now live to the mayor of the Halifax Regional Municipality, uh, Peter Kelly. Good morning, Mayor Kelly. Good morning, Steve. Uh, Mayor Kelly, in a city that has a lot of problems this morning, uh, what do you and the EMO officials consider to be the major problem in Halifax at the moment? Basically, uh, with the amount of power outages that are going on, with the amount of trees that are down, and with regards to uh, the, uh, the power lines that are down as well, we're trying to get a handle on uh, to the degree of so a verity now that it's a daylight and our, our crews are in full operations and trying to get things cleaned up as quickly as possible.
The wind gusts uh, reported at Halifax International Airport at the peak of the storm, 143 kilometers per hour. I heard one report earlier this morning of a wind gust of 177 kilometers per hour at Shearwater. And the storm was still packing winds of 139 kilometers per hour as it passed west of Charlottetown. That was uh, shortly after 3 o'clock Atlantic Daylight Time this morning. And the information from the Canadian Hurricane Center as of 6 a.m. had one moving toward the north at 40 knots or about 74 kilometers per hour with maximum sustained winds at 55 knots. Uh, the schools in the HRM are closed this morning as are schools in East Hants, Cumberland, Colchester and Pictou County. The problem of course has been uh, that uh, many, many trees have fallen, particularly in the Halifax area. Many of the roads are impassable and add to that the fact that there is no electrical service in most of the areas you see highlighted on the screen. We are uh, preempting breakfast television for our special coverage this morning, but Jason Baxter is out in Halifax this morning and he is joining us now. Jay? Steve, right now I'm on Willow Street. You can see a lot of people uh, are actually, they're certainly not driving to work this morning, but uh, they're walking to work. We're just coming out to check the damage for themselves. As you can see behind me, really you can't see more than 50 to 100 feet down Willow Street. Uh, there are so many trees down. If you look this way, uh, you can see that we have uh, a lot of down power lines and an immense tree that has fallen uh, on top of this home right here. In fact, uh, some of the branches have gone right through an upstairs uh, window there. If you come on over this way, uh, one of the neighbors, Andrew Callahan, is here right now. Andrew, thanks, uh, thanks for talking to us. Uh, you live in this building behind us? Yeah, this one right here on Willow Street. Yeah. Did, did you actually hear this tree come down last night? We heard all kinds of trees, branches throughout the night. We lost power at 1030, and then it was just like... Every now and then we'd hear a crash and a flash, we'd see a big snap, figured it, you know, power lines going down, transformer or something. But all through the night, I heard branches going. Were you worried about your safety at any point? I was worried about my car, getting crushed by a tree, but that's about it. But this guy right here, his truck, that's that guy right there, and he missed it by like a foot. Didn't, didn't miss it by much. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. Let's gonna have a few words with this gentleman right here. Excuse me. Hi, my name is Jason Baxter from ATV. What's your name? Joe, Joe Antonowitz. Joe. And this is your, this red pickup is yours right here. This is certainly my truck, yes. <laughs> Are you feeling uh, pretty lucky this morning? Very lucky. Oh, yes, I got to shake it. Well, got to say thanks to God, I guess. <laughs> Do you live in one of these buildings around here? Yeah, we just live on the corner of Willow and Roby there. So uh, could, you, could you hear this tree or, or other trees coming down through the night? Uh, we guess we missed this tree by about half hour. We were outside around 12.30 and we seen the one down there that got blown over and a bunch up here, but we never seen this one. Uh, Nova Scotia Power is uh, fighting a major battle this morning to restore service. Margaret Murphy is on the telephone line with us again this morning. Hi, Margaret. Good morning. Uh, any change in status in terms of the restoration of power now in the wake of the storm? Well, our crews are, um, we're focusing our efforts on the metro area. It was the hardest hit, the biggest impact. Uh, this is the area of concentration. Uh, it's very difficult going out there. Uh, the crews are going to have to proceed very cautiously, very cautiously today indeed. Uh, plenty of hazards, but uh, we, will, um, uh, we will, over time, uh, this effort will pick up. We, we are seeing progress. Uh, but it is going to take significant resources and significant time. If you're just joining us now, I want to show you the boardwalk down here. This is what we see on this side and also, uh, I guess, to, to the east, east of me. But it is, the boardwalk is completely torn up. Uh, the patio furniture is in a, a, a huge heap. And I, I took a peek inside the, the large windows, and it appears like there's beer kegs scattered all inside and we were told there's seaweed that managed to get in and salties which is at the very end the walls are completely blown out we're going now live to mike lester the executive director of nova scotia's emergency measures organization good morning mike good morning steve let's get the big picture from you this morning uh, where are the critical problems in the province of nova scotia here just after eight o'clock well the, uh, most of it is right here in, uh, in Metro uh, HRM. It's, uh, of course, as you mentioned, the power blackout. Uh, we're getting some uh, information from outside, but it's just really starting to come in. It's been rather slow overnight, uh, and I think uh, that's due to the fact that most people stayed indoors and uh, are just now getting out in the daylight.
And it's now pounding rain again in the Halifax area. That is not as a result of Hurricane Juan. In fact, that is another storm system, but it doesn't really matter. It is more rain on top of a huge quantity of rain that's already fallen overnight. And ATV's Jason Baxter is out on the streets of Halifax this morning. Jason? Steve, with first light this morning, it's becoming uh, increasingly obvious that this is going to be a familiar scene uh, across Halifax. We are on Waterloo Street right now, where you can see an enormous tree has come down, uh, just grazed this house across the street, but it's come, if you walk around this way, you can see it and, uh, and a smaller tree have crashed uh, into the uh, deck and porch area of this home over here. Uh, Becky Ty joins me right now. She's one of the neighbors. Becky's place is actually in this greenhouse. She lives, uh, this is her bedroom window up in this area right here. So Becky, can you describe for me what it was like when this, uh, this enormous tree came crashing down? Um, it was pretty scary. Just like there was just a lot of noise and a lot of winds last night, so it didn't sort of made up for the huge crashing tree. <laughs> what time did this happen? Um, about midnight. Where were you in? The, were you in your room at the time? No, we all sort of huddled downstairs in my living room. So, um, but my one of my friends was actually in my room at the time, and he said he could feel the whole. Like it felt like the whole house. It took off our side of our electrical box, um, of the side of our house. So that was, uh, the, like that was the biggest noise. Have you talked to any of your neighbors this morning, including uh, people that live in this building here? Yeah, I talk, we are uh, friends with those guys. They said they opened their, their back door and there was literally, literally a tree there. So it's pretty scary. Were you shocked to see the damage when you woke up? Um, no, it was pretty scary last night, so we knew that there was going to be quite a bit of damage done. A scant 12 hours later, by noon on Monday, September 29th, in the full light of a beautiful summer-like day, just like this, the full extent of the damage and the destruction was all too visible. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the news at noon for Monday, September 29th. Hurricane Juan is now a tropical storm, but its aftermath will be felt for a good long time to come. The damage, particularly in the Halifax area, is extensive. At least two people have been killed. Hundreds, if not thousands, of trees are toppled or badly damaged. And as you've seen, power wires are dangling in the wind while hundreds of thousands of people are without electrical service in both Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. At its height, the winds in Juan reached 143 kilometers per hour. It is the first direct hit on Halifax by a hurricane since Ginny in October of 1963. The Halifax Regional Municipality is continuing a state of emergency. The hurricane has also taken a very heavy toll on the Queen Elizabeth II Health Sciences Center, where the roof of one of the buildings has blown off. Three units have been evacuated, 51 patients, some of them elderly, have been moved to other parts of the complex. ATV's Mark Petroni is at the scene. Mark. The massive rubble behind me actually used to be a good chunk of the roof of the Centennial Building. That's one of the buildings that makes up the, uh, the QE2 hospital complex here in Halifax. And you can see huge chunks of the roof just sitting there along with uh, the trees that uh, are now down. This is a common area behind me and I'm standing in the parking lot of, right, of the QE2 right in front of the Centennial Building. And you can see right up there pieces of the roof just kind of uh, hanging there. I'm told that around 2 o'clock this morning, that's about the height of the storm. That roof uh, basically just blew off. Uh, I spoke with a woman who was in the building at the time. She tells me that the, the whole building uh, shook. Uh, I'm also told that uh, this, earlier this morning, around 8 o'clock, uh, there was flooding and uh, that three units here had to be uh, evacuated. One of those units was a palliative care. So right now, uh, you can see the cleanup crew uh, busy at work. At one point, this parking lot was uh, full of cars. Now there's only a few here, and you can see that one behind me is, is uh, completely covered by a downed tree. So uh, these cleanup workers obviously have their work cut out for them, and uh, they're going to be busy for a good chunk of today. All right, thanks very much, Mark. ATV's Mark Petroni at the QE2, the VG site in the south end of Halifax. ATV's Jason Baxter has been out in the Spryfield area today with the residents of a local trailer park are counting their blessings. Debris from a nearby apartment building was wreaking havoc on the park, and Jason is joining us now with those details. Jay? Steve, it's becoming evident as we travel around uh, HRM that the damage isn't limited to fallen trees. This the structure behind me used to be the roof 
of this apartment building over here. You can see the majority of the roof is gone. It no longer exists, and it's landed right here in the street uh, in this uh, trailer park in Spryfield. And you can see uh, the number three mobile home over here. Much of its roof has been torn off. This is and uh, a lot of extensive damage. The gentleman that lives here, his mother lives just across the street in this yellow trailer and uh, miraculously her place hasn't been damaged too much but this roof has gone right up to the base of uh, her mobile home. Neighbors are still a little bit nervous. There's a lot of down power lines. You can see power lines right here in front of us and uh, the, the power of course is out right now but they're worried if the power comes back on uh, it's the ground's very wet and uh, potentially could be some live wires. Richard Saunier, who joins me now, he lives in this uh, mobile home right across from us. And, and Richard, uh, you must have quite a bit of damage. Yeah, there is. Well, the damage to the roof, the windows are all smashed out in the front, water damage, and God knows, the fence is broken down. God knows what else is done. Like, where are you going to stay? <clears throat> Still stay there, just put some plastic and stuff up over the windows and stuff. Can you take us through what happened last night, what it sounded like, what it looked like? It was unbelievable. It was so loud. And the crash. But we didn't know what it was because the power was off and it happened around 12.30, quarter to one. But Glenn, he knew, he looked out with the flashlight and he seen all this. He thought it was his roof. But it was here it kind of to be the roof off the trailer. I mean, the, the big apartment building there. But the, the crash when it hit here was unbelievable. I heard thunder all but I've never heard anything like that before in my life. What kind of streak of luck do you think it is that it landed in the middle of the street instead of really coming down full weight on one of these mobile homes? It's a godsend. Godsend. You know, like, look at all these houses, and it flew over these houses. It flew right over them. It had to have to come off that roof. It, it's unbelievable. It's just luck, I think. Luck. No one was hurt. No one was hurt. It's unbelievable. Godsend. A multi-million dollar replica of the ship Hector made an unscheduled voyage during this storm. This is what is greeting visitors to the Picto waterfront this morning. High winds have ripped the Hector from its dockside moorings and pushed it about 30 meters toward a waterfront restaurant in Picto. Along the way, the Hector sheared the top off a smaller vessel from the Picto marina. And the mayor of the HRM, Peter Kelly, is joining us now on the phone. Uh, mayor Kelly, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Steve. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you doing? Good, thank you. How's the city doing? Uh, we're getting back to life uh, slowly. Um, we have our crew slow trying to address the issues of the uh, fallen trees and uh, down wires. Uh, it is challenging and to deal with them when there are people uh, around uh, who are out to see what is going on, and it does um, hurt or slow down the process uh, with our crews. Like virtually all of the uh, coastal and low-lying areas, the waterfront in Halifax has sustained considerable damage in Hurricane Juan. ATV's Andrew uh, is live there now to bring us up to speed. Uh, what is the situation on the waterfront there now? Well, Steve, there is hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage. Damage is all along, but probably the saddest story is the one right behind me. This is a colonial schooner. As you can see, it is submerged with uh, the mast sticking out. This was owned by a man by the name of Larry Mahan. He built this uh, vessel 30 years ago and he actually lived on this vessel and is completely gone. He is left with nothing. But all along here you see huge rocks. The pavement in the parking lot nearby is caved in. Kiosks are shattered. Uh, Murphy's on the Water, which is a popular restaurant down here, one of its own vessels uh, cut loose yesterday as a result of the hurricane and smashed right into the side of the restaurant. So business owners here are obviously not open for business. They're too busy mopping up today. Good afternoon, everyone. It's 30 seconds past 5 o'clock. I'm Steve Murphy with a special edition of Live at 5 and the ATV Evening News. For the first time in 40 years, the city of Halifax has sustained a direct hit from a hurricane. There is extensive damage to trees and buildings and boats, and at least two people have lost their lives. Tens of thousands are still without electrical power in both Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island, where the general election has gone ahead today, despite the storm damage. And there is plenty of damage. We want to bring in a special guest. Mr. Ham, can you Premier come over Ham? Here? Senator John Hamm, uh, one of the many, many people uh, wandering around uh, on the waterfront here today. What was it like at your house last night? Noisy. 
<laughs> the wind blew all night. Uh, the phone rang all night uh, with uh, reports uh, from Ernie Fage, who's the minister responsible for the Emergency Measures Organization. And uh, about 5 a.m., I decided to, to look uh, out the front door and a huge tree that uh, had been in front of the house for over 30 years toppled over and just missed my wife's car. Most everyone knew Hurricane Juan was coming, but few were prepared. Down at the Halifax waterfront, it was a sight all too familiar. Businesses in the business of cleaning up. It's scary like to know that uh, a storm could come into Halifax like this and do this kind of damage. I guarantee the next time there's a hurricane warning here in Halifax, people will act and respond a little bit differently than this time. Damage was severe. Hurricane Juan unleashed vessels, causing them to slam into the sides of buildings. Entire patios were tattered and destroyed. Docks ripped up and overturned. Hard to believe this is where people sat quietly just over a day ago. For businessmen like Tom Hayes, it's a day he'll never forget. Well, I've, I've, I've lived through a lot of storms and have been at sea through a, a lot of storms, but this is probably the worst uh, that I've ever seen. Most businesses will recover, but others will not be as fortunate. This is what's left of Larry Mahan's colonial schooner, a vessel he built 30 years ago, a ship he called home. Even the ferry terminals didn't escape the wrath of one. Construction crews in Halifax worked tirelessly to repair the torn sidings and shattered windows. Despite the destruction, people seemed drawn to one's force. Dozens ventured out of their homes and made their way to the waterfront, hoping to add one for the scrapbook. Hurricane Juan knocked down trees one after another like dominoes. Hundreds of fallen trees littered the streets of Halifax. Tangled power lines crisscross roads and sidewalks, leaving homes in the dark and its occupants wondering what hit them. The city was a mess. It will be weeks and weeks and could be months cleaning up this mess. Hurricane Juan left behind a wake of broken trees, crushed vehicles and a city in shock. This is Liverpool Street in the west side of Halifax. Once a shady street lined with ancient maple trees, today it looks more like a war zone. The sidewalks are buckled, trees uprooted, the landscape has changed forever. And then I heard screaming, so I came ran upstairs and I saw the trees sticking out of the wall. Well, that's right, and I, like, at home, folks, I don't know if you can see this, but there's actually a tree that's come through uh, what seems to be a linen closet here, and also into these bedrooms, trees have come in through the, through the ceilings. So I'm not sure if you can get a good look at that, but up in that corner there and also across the hall into this other bedroom here more more trees and there's uh well it, it looks like what uh, may be flooding in your basement now starting to flood right hurricane juan was random and chaotic in its destruction but no blow was more keenly felt in the city of trees than this but it's still not very good no. halifax's historic and beautiful public gardens widely regarded as the heart of the city, ripped out last night faster than a heartbeat. Trees that took a century to grow toppled like a deck of cards. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Steve Nelson is one of over a hundred thousand people without power today. Some has been restored in the downtown core, but it's limited. Emergency workers now hampered, they say, by floods of people on the streets. There are no trains between Halifax and Truro. If the tracks aren't flooded, then they're blocked, like this one. There is so much damage, crews can't get to all of it. So it's street by street, pole by pole. And just now, word that 200 military personnel are on their way to assist in the cleanup. People are aware that uh, Nova Scotia was very hard hit and are responding appropriately. Halifax remains in a state of emergency. There are long lineups for gas at the few stations that have their own power. Schools are closed, as are most businesses. Non-essential workers are staying home. We have uh, a possibility of live wires hanging across the road on the Herring Harbor Road right now. Juan has claimed four lives, two at sea, and two fatalities from falling trees, including paramedic John Rossiter.
Emergency workers say keeping people safe over these next few critical days is their number one concern. The losses at this point, they say, simply too great to tally. Officials say they won't know that for at least another week. We're in Fairview now at Mandeville Court at a building that, uh, well, really didn't make it through the evening. As you can see, there's debris and it's just, it's a horrible sight. Uh, the building was evacuated this morning and one of the evacuees is, uh, is joining us right now. His name is Dave Barkhouse. Dave, my gosh, what kind of a night did you have? It was a scary night. I, uh, I was talking on the phone with a few friends and it was about 12 o'clock or so and I noticed the tree had gone and I said oh my god the tree's gone I, and then it sounded like a, a, you mean you could see it through your window and it wasn't there anymore right there <laughs> and it wasn't there and then it sounded like a freight train going through the apartment and I said I think our roof is coming off um, I'll give you a call back so I came down to the lobby and the tenants were all in the lobby gathering and the lobby by the way is behind it's all behind of this all of this yeah uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, they had said, I was talking to some friends on the third floor, and they had said the roof was blowing off. And uh, when we looked out the window, we could see this. And at that point, well, we knew we were in trouble. Hey, TV's Alex Fass is joining us now live in Charlottetown, where the damage appears to be quite significant as well. Alex? That's right, Steve. Hurricane Juan cut a swath through Prince Edward Island, starting in Charlottetown moving northward towards the Cavendish Rustico area. As a result, power knocked out to most of Prince Edward Island, two-thirds of it last night. It's slowly coming back, but Maritime Electric says it could take some time. But the first place hit, the Charlottetown waterfront. The Charlottetown Yacht Club was the first to feel the force of Hurricane Juan. Any hopes of it diminishing as across Nova Scotia were for naught. 139 kilometer an hour winds battered the marina. As many as 27 boats were pushed into a small area overnight. So there's about four or five boats that sank for sure, and there's different degrees of, uh, of damage done to the uh, boats that uh, did not sink. You know, all the, uh, the whole marina is going to have to be rebuilt almost. You know, we'll salvage what fingers and docks we can, but other than that, you know, there's a lot that's probably going to be beyond repairable and have to be replaced. About 30 boat owners were able to get their vessels out of the water before the storm hit. This has damaged many long-time sailors say they've never seen in Charlottetown Harbor. Just blocks away from the Yacht Club, the cleanup of a favorite downtown park is well underway. Nearly every tree was uprooted, some just missing homes across the street. It's very sad. We used to come here to play all the time. I think it's just absolutely heartbreaking. It really is. This is uh, for the people in this neighborhood. This is tragic. The cleanup will take days. Trees are down all across Charlottetown. Power crews are doing what they can to restore electricity. At the height of the storm, 44,000 Islanders were without power. Maritime Electric crews are getting help from NB Power and St. John Energy and are working as fast as they can. Steve, I've never seen anything like this, and most of the people who live around here in Clyde River and New Haven haven't seen anything like it either. But Islanders are tough and resourceful, and they're already cleaning up. No one here has ever seen anything like it. Three generations of one family have lived here. The McPhees love their big trees, but last night they came down hard and fast. When I finally stepped out here and I looked, and my whole yard was completely covered with this great big huge tree. And my meat shop and my garage were completely flattened. The McPhees weren't the only ones hit. Out on the highway, a long line of telephone poles lie on the ground. Further on, there are more sections of downed poles. There are also demolished barns just up the road. This farming family was fortunate in one sense. Their cattle were outside last night, and the section housing their horses remained intact. A little further along, and another century-old barn was left in ruins. Words really seem inadequate in the face of uh, images and scenes like this which can be found all over. But there is simple truth in certain of the cliches. The worst really does often bring out the best in people. People do reach out and help each other in times of trouble. 
And of course, the people in emergency and public service really do their best. And finally, Hurricane Juan is a powerful and sobering reminder of the awesome and unpredictable nature of the North Atlantic, which has always shaped our lives here in Atlantic Canada. I can't believe how good it all been. I don't, I don't think I've ever had so many hugs in my life. <laughs>